I think it's fair to say that I am very hopeful for the future of Wayland. Right now, it is already good enough for a lot of people, but I legitimately think within a couple of years, it is going to be good enough for the vast majority of Linux users. This isn't one of the situations where it's going to be done in 5 years, in 10 years, and then 5 or 10 years never happens, and by that point, it's going to take another 5 or 10 years. But not everyone starts in this hopeful camp. There is a lot of people out there that don't think it's really going to have that much of a future. For example, we have a self-proclaimed X11 apologist who decided to try Wayland. I think it's only fair to call me an X apologist. I get incredibly frustrated when people talk about dropping support for X11, referring to the rumors that GTK5 may not have X11 support only using Wayland on Linux. I fight back against the notion that someday X11 will be dead and unmaintained, a curiosity of a time before. I've spoken to people in my circles at length about the accessibility tools that Wayland simply hasn't been capable of supporting that X11 has. A lot of times, I've ended this conversation with maybe five years from now, it'll be good. Well, it's been five years since I first said those words, and you know what? I'm actually pleasantly surprised. And they made the correct decision with the environment to go with. Really, there is only three options if you want a seamless experience. GNOME, KDE, and Sway. Yes, there are a lot of really cool and really neat projects out there like Wayfire, Hyperland, LabWC. But all of these require you learning a whole new environment. Sway is literally just i3 on Wayland. You probably have used i3, you probably have an i3 config laying around, it's very easy to start using, the project has a lot of developers, so when new features are coming into WL Roots, they're pretty much supported straight away, it's probably the best entry point into Wayland tiling. The first thing to touch on is latency and vsync. So if you don't know, at this stage, Wayland is pretty much all about perfect frames. The idea is that screen tearing is a relic of the past and shouldn't be happening on a modern system. Personally, I don't really care that much about screen tearing. I've been a gamer for a very long time. I've dealt with screen tearing my entire life. I just don't really notice anymore, but I can understand why you may not like it. So the way you deal with it is you have VSync on all of the time, but this isn't a perfect solution and does lead to some problems. Once I actually started Sway though, I was not happy to see that my mouse felt laggy. It's not the sort of thing that makes it unusable, but it felt like I had just switched to using a Bluetooth mouse. I use a Bluetooth mouse, personally I don't really notice any problems with them, but some people don't like them. I've been around the block long enough to know that Sway was almost certainly using a software cursor. The thing is, Sway, or more accurately WL Roots, supports hardware cursors. This is dependent on Linux's direct rendering manager, DRM, but not the bad kind providing a cursor layer when queried, which I guess is not being done for my GPU. I'm not really sure why that is, as my GPU definitely has a cursor layer, they even went and checked the kernel code, but I haven't chased this rabbit hole to conclusion. Now I've never seen this issue on my hardware. I use an AMD GPU and it just works fine. My Bluetooth mouse feels fine, my wired mouse feels fine, I've tried other mice, all of them feel perfectly fine, but the author does mention that they are using a bit of a atypical hardware setup. They have an 800 megahertz netbook that doesn't have a working dedicated GPU. So there may be something weird going on with the old hardware where Sway just isn't behaving like it should be. But it's not like all hope is lost because Sway exposes a setting called the max render time. This is basically a setting which tells the system how long to wait until the next frame needs to be displayed to actually go and composite or create that next frame. So if we go and set the max render time to 1, it will wait until the very last millisecond before the V-blank interval to composite a frame, which is probably a bad idea unless you have a god tier GPU. Because if it takes longer than 1 millisecond to composite, it and misses the V-blank interval, then you've actually added an entire frame's worth of latency to the situation. What you actually want to do is keep raising up the number until you notice your system isn't skipping frames. Grab some sort of looping animation like GLX gears or any animation you can find on the internet. And once your system isn't skipping frames and you have a perfectly smooth animation, 
what you've done is lowered your latency down to the lowest it can possibly be while still maintaining no screen tearing. To the best of my knowledge and the author's knowledge, this is something not possible on X11. Yes, you can enable VSync, but I don't believe you have this granular level of control over when the frame is being generated. And this leads to a great situation. It feels fantastic. It even made my software cursor feel not so software-y, which I've never experienced with a software cursor before. I have a pretty bad GPU, but on a higher end card, you get a huge benefit to this in games. If your card can render the game many times faster than your monitor's refresh rate, you can unlock your FPS in the game, tune your max render time to the absolute minimum, and get extremely low latency while still having absolutely no screen tearing whatsoever. I don't have an incredible GPU, so I'm not doing this for games like Elden Ring, for example, but for esports titles and indie games, that might be pretty compelling. And because the author is using Sway, we need to address WL Roots. Most of the compositing logic is actually handled by a library called WL Roots, a project that spawned from Sway, but is now used in quite a few other compositors out there. Now, I've done a video on WL Roots, and it's hard to say if that's really the case or not, because there is a lot of kind of boilerplate code that every compositor needs to add that isn't directly handled by WL Roots. So you sort of end up half writing Sway anyway if you want a functional compositor. Some compositor devs disagree on this, but that's the general consensus that I've heard. But obviously WL Root does make it considerably easier than writing completely from scratch, otherwise no one would use it. As a result, if one WL Roots compositor can do it, there's a good chance the rest can too. I think where this is especially true is when it comes to the protocols, not the Wayland core protocols, everything is supporting those. I mean the WL Roots extensions. If you're using WL Roots, the vast majority of the WL Roots compositors are using all of the extensions, or at least the ones that are actually useful. But if we're talking about settings being exposed to the user or features being available, that's not necessarily the case just because they're both using WL Roots. Obviously, there's going to be a max render time setting somewhere in the background to handle when frames should be generated, but you might have a compositor that doesn't expose that to the user or handles that in a completely different fashion. But what I do agree with is this. From my perspective, WL Roots has sort of become the de facto standard for compositor features. Much like how Xsoftware assumes they're running under Xorg, when really other X servers do exist and have varying degrees of support for the extensions Xorg supports. A lot of the applications made in the context of Wayland are made with WL Roots in mind. Because sure, there is GNOME and KDE, and those are probably bigger and will definitely be bigger going into the future as, you know, NVIDIA stuff gets dealt with and things like that. But they have a lot of applications existing in their environment already. There's a lot of stuff that doesn't need to be replaced. So a lot of the really neat and interesting applications are made with WL Roots in mind. And a lot of the really cool and interesting useful protocols are being created and first tested inside of WL Roots. And while that is the case, let's be very clear that there is three very distinct environments. GNOME, KDE, and WL Roots. And there is certainly some level of cooperation between the environments, especially between WL Roots and KDE. GNOME does cooperate as well, just not as much as those two projects. There is also a potential fourth major environment, that being Smithy. The reason why this has any hope of gaining traction is this is the one that PopOS is backing. They're building their own environment, and the Wayland side is going to be using this. I don't like there's going to be more fragmentation, but, you know, that's sort of the nature of Wayland. It's kind of better than it used to be because now there is these major environments. There are still some little ones that do exist, but like Arkin, for example, no one cares about them. And while there will always be fragmentation on the back end because they're different projects trying to do different things, when it comes to the front end, there are some tools coming around to kind of alleviate the issue. The solution for higher level pieces of software like browsers, OBS, and anything else that doesn't want to think about this seems to be something called XDG portals. These were initially created for flat packs as a way to handle a permission system. 
but they fit quite nicely into Wayland as well. So rather than having applications write the GNOME version, the KDE version, and the WL Roots version, what they can do is query these portals and say, I want this resource. And then they don't have to worry about how the resource actually gets to them because that is dealt with by the desktops. So the user would install XDG Desktop Portal GNOME or KDE or WL Roots, whatever they're using on their environment. And then that portal is going to handle getting the resource to the application. And then for getting a video feed of your desktop for applications like OBS, for example, you have Pipewire, which this author isn't even using as their audio system. As they say, I've got Pipewire working on my system purely for screencasting. I like Pipewire for audio, but I can understand wanting to keep your audio system on Pulse Audio, letting it mature a bit, and then eventually you'll merge them together. But yeah, you don't have to use Pipewire for your audio if you don't want to. If you still want to go with your older solution, that's totally doable. And the author also addresses accessibility. This is one area that I am really concerned with, but not an area that personally affects me. And when it comes to accessibility, not just on Wayland, but the Linux desktop in general, outside of GNOME and KDE, Accessibility development is flaky at best. There are some projects, but most of them don't really get that much funding and they work, but they're nowhere near the level of tools available on Windows and macOS. Even for very basic things like gamma control and redshifting. GNOME and KDE handle this in their own ecosystems okay. And WL Roots actually has support for this now too. The actual tools to use it are a little bit more sparse, but they are out there. There's some tools like Gamma Step and WL Sunset that support this, but I'm used to using Redshift. So I've been using Minus 7's Redshift fork to do both Redshifting and Gamma Control for my monitor. But for something more important like screen reading, it works basically the same way it works over on X, which is... It functions, but it could certainly be a lot better, especially when it comes to things like the voice packs that are available. When it comes to doing things like input automation, this is a touch harder than doing it over on X, but there is a tool available called YDO Tool. This is basically works the same way as XDO Tool, but rather than querying the X server for your inputs and sending your inputs through the X server, it goes directly through slash dev slash u input. So this actually circumvents your desktop entirely and works on both X and also Wayland, but would also work directly on the TTY and anywhere else on your system. However, because it is using dev u input, unlike XDO tool where a regular user could go and run it, this does generally require root access. So for tools like Talon Voice, a way to control your system with voice control and eye tracking, the input emulation part is totally doable. But there are some other issues like, is there a way to query the list of windows and active focus? And for some desktops like Sway, for example, yeah, you can do that. But as a generic thing, I don't believe that is currently possible. Something a bit harder to do that I don't think I'd ever heard of is something known as dwell clicking. If you're not aware, this sort of software waits for the user to stop moving their mouse and then automatically performs a click, typically with audio and or visual feedback. Naturally, any software doing this needs to know if the user is moving their mouse or performing clicks. There's not really a good way for me as a software developer to query this data in real time from the compositor. This is a bit more real time than simple user idle detection, which they do provide. I also need to know when mouse clicks happen so I can cancel my auto click to avoid an accidental double click if the user manually inputs a click. So basically I'm asking for the mouse equivalent of a keylogger, which is a thing Wayland stuff really tries hard to not provide for security reasons. If there's any environment that would make something like this available, it would probably be in WL Roots and probably something like Sway. All in all, I'm very impressed with the work the Wayland community has done since I last did a serious look at the state of things. I'm still waiting for a stacking window manager that scratches the same itch for me that IceWM does, but I'm following LabWC with great interest. I keep hearing about two compositors, Hyperland and LabWC. Both of which I am going to cover on this channel. I'm going to do Hyperland first, and then at some point after that, we will look at LabWC. At this point, though, I've established that I can live my life on Wayland, and for the time being, 
I am. Not everyone can yet though, and there's still work to be done. Part of why I'm feeling the urge to transition to Wayland is performance benefits, but the other part is that I'll be able to help solve some of the unsolved problems to make it viable for more people. And I think this is where most people would sit if they legitimately gave Wayland a shot. There are still some issues like network transparency, for example, which do affect a certain number of users. But for most other use cases, Wayland is totally usable, albeit for some of them a bit less efficient. And once those efficiency issues get ironed out, Wayland seems like a better place to be. But they didn't change their opinion about X dying. I don't think X is ever going to die. Even if it fades away on Linux, there's a lot of old video hardware that will probably only ever be well supported with real Xorg on Linux and other OSs like NetBSD. It's very hard to argue that X isn't going to die on modern hardware, but for legacy hardware, you know, as long as people are using ancient ThinkPads, X is always going to have some sort of foothold. And I fully agree with this final statement. If you're into GNOME, Wayland is probably a good experience today out of the box, even if you aren't a power user. But I'm not into GNOME, which is why I haven't looked at it in this post. If you're not into GNOME either, but you want to give Wayland a shot, just know what you're getting into. And that's very true. Wayland, while being pretty much good enough, there are going to be some extra hurdles that you might need to jump over, especially if you are using something like Sway, for example. But let me know what you think. Do you think X11 is going to always be around into the future? Do you think Wayland is just around the corner? I would love to know. Let me know down below. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, Scribe, Stanley, Barrow, Pay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Optum Plays. That's going to be it for me and... I'm out.